Yo guys, what's up? It's RJ with Roads to Liberty. Just uh, coming out with a little video today. It is the fourth day of July. Nothing special about that is, uh, that I can think of. Um, no, just kidding. Um, most of uh, America is celebrating a uh, status holiday known as Independence Day, which is the day that Amer um, many Americans believe represents um, an arbitrary point in time when they became more free. Um, which I believe is not true, and insofar as it is not true that they're more free, it's um, a farce, you know, to celebrate a day of freedom when in fact um, you don't have freedom. Um, okay, so to give you guys a quick overview, I'm going to do a few things today, topic wise. I want to talk about my new situation, what happened to the tent. Since the last video, am I homeless, am I not, what's going on? And then I want to talk about um, a little bit more about freedom and liberty and how they pertain to uh, the state or not. And um, what else, what else, what else? Oh, okay. I'm going to get into um, getting away from the state. You know, I'm going to touch on that for a little bit towards the end of the video. Um, in terms of actually, you know, you guys might have heard the phrase agorism. Um, agorism is the practice of basically going around the state, so creating creating a market or um, a lifestyle that um, does not require state um, dispute resolution or state um, currency, possibly using Bitcoin or barter or um, precious metals so we'll get into that down uh towards the end of the episode um but um in the meantime um i'm gonna give you guys a quick uh freedom tunes cartoon to check out um which you can find more of at freedomtunes.com that's done by a buddy of mine and uh, i helped him with the website and stuff so uh check that out and then uh we'll get right into today's episode all right cool if you believe in free trials for people accused of terrorism, you support the terrorists. If you believe in free trials for people accused of rape, you're a rape apologist! I believe in free trials for everybody because the assumption that you're innocent until proven guilty is the cornerstone of a civil society. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that um, episode of Freedom Tunes. Quick little uh, treat for you guys there to you know, kind of mix up the monotony. Um, I'm a little red-eyed. I took a bull hit and also um, just woke up from my nappy nap. So uh, I'm a little, I'm not as uh, probably uh, dull from a mental um, perspective as I may appear to be from a uh, visual. I have to make a point to keep this microphone from touching my shirt because it creates that annoying scrapey sound that you guys probably are hating right now. So by getting it situated just so, uh, I think these headphones are actually probably better than the uh, iPhones. Any which way, you guys are probably wondering what is going on behind me here. Um, this isn't a mountain, you know, what the hell. This is actually where I started Try Homeless at this dock here. I walked from here to... Um, you know, like Freehold, New Jersey. Uh, I think I jumped on a bus or two. And then I got to Absecon, um, through another bus, and then I flew to California. You guys know. Um, but long story short, I'm back here in New Jersey, and it appears that um, I have an opportunity business-wise to, to be here um, in, in my family, actually. My dad um, and my mom are uh, planning a separation, a divorce, which... Uh, as a sidebar, I'm I'm pretty cool with it um, at this stage in my life, especially. Um, but also, I think they probably um, might be happier. Maybe not, but you can always change your mind and go back. But um, so they're going to try that. Um, so they're selling the house right here by this dock, by this marina. And uh, my mom's going to move somewhere. My dad's going to move to PA, and he's interested in trying to use some of his, um, you know, savings and whatnot to invest in real estate out there. 
so I'm excited for that. I plan on um, being kind of his right hand man with that sort of stuff, and um, you know, I'll be doing a lot of the grunt work, cleaning and rehabbing properties and stuff like that. But I'll also be doing a lot of the stuff I do all the time, which is marketing and web design. Um, you know, there's a good degree of um, marketing that goes into um, getting getting rentals. You know, it's one thing to have a rental property, but there's no guarantee that you're going to rent it out every night or even you know any nights. So that's the new challenge that I'm looking at. That's something I think that um, I can lend my skills towards and be effective. So I'm looking forward to um, testing my skills in that arena. Um, so I'm going to be in the Jersey area um, probably for the next week or so, to two weeks until um, the first property is closed on. And then I'll move in there and start working on that property. And then we plan on trying to do uh, a second property. So if anyone wants to stay in um, lovely Poconos Mountain area, um, Pennsylvania, for affordable rates on a nightly, weekly, or monthly basis, uh, contact me, and I could uh, get you set up. Uh, okay, what else? Um, those of you that have been watching the videos know that I got bit by something or I had some sort of rash. Um, turns out that is not fully taken care of. The rash appears to be, for the most part, gone. But um, today, especially, I've had a ton of soreness um, in my shoulder, in my neck, and actually into my jaw. Um, it's not the worst, but it's unusual, and I know it's um, some sort of toxin that my body was exposed to. Um, that's at least what the doctor said in Colorado. But, you know, it's not killing me, so it's probably not very lethal. Um, it's just a nuisance, hopefully, but... Um, I guess if it gets worse to where it's, you know, super painful or something, I'll, um, I'll go get it checked out. As for the videos, guys, I want your feedback too. I, um, I'm doing this one without the background music, the hip hop, uh, bed that, that, uh, actually, you know, humble brag, I wrote that on my little, uh, garage band app, but, you know, I wanted to make a new one just to keep it fresh, but at the same time, not everyone likes hip hop and some people don't need an audio bed period to, to enjoy, you know. A podcast. This is basically a podcast because it's uh, currently easier for me to do it this way. Um, also, it's a lot less commitment to do, you know, irregular content on YouTube versus um, podcasting on a on an X, you know, regular basis, so daily, weekly, monthly, whatever. Uh, all right. So without getting too deviated, um, I talked about the pain in my neck, so to speak. Um, I jumped over something. Uh, I got. Two or three new sites, three three new sites that are uh, coming down the uh, pike, so to speak. Um, the most relevant one for you guys is a site called LibertyMemes.com. Uh, most of you probably already saw me sharing a lot of links, but if you haven't seen it yet, or if you're new to Roads to Liberty, um, check out RoadsToLiberty.com for some cool blog content and uh, some of our other videos with some blog content around them. But check out uh, LibertyMemes.com, which is, you know, a short form. Um, ADD kind of inspired version of Roads to Liberty where it's all memes. I have it broken down into categories. Um, it's 100% ad supported. Uh, we take donations for Roads to Liberty at Roads to Liberty forward slash donate. But that's so that I can increase um, the level of content and um, justify putting more time into to creating content for Roads to Liberty. Uh, as a sidebar to that, um, so anyway, the, the three sites, uh, Liberty LibertyMemes.com, uh, I took that idea and said, well, if memes for liberty are, are somewhat popular, let me try something that's even more popular. And I made a website called cutecatmemes.com. It's cute cat, um, like kittens and whatnot. So cutecatmemes.com is my site as well. And uh, let me let me pause this video. I got some families walking by. I don't want to disturb them. All right, guys. Thanks for bearing with me on that. Um, I always feel awkward when I'm talking to myself, recording video outside and like families are walking by or like an individual or whatever, or even kids. <laughs> My guy's talking to himself, what the hell? Anyway, uh, the websites. So, did Liberty Memes two days ago, three days ago. That was starting to take off a little bit. I made cute cat memes thinking, hey, if I can win with Liberty Memes, basically anarchist or voluntarist memes, you know, cats should be, you know, a no-brainer. Interestingly enough, um, so far, the cat's site is uh, in second place on the meme side. 
The new one I just started is uh, StarWarsMemes.com. I'm surprised some of these domains are available, but maybe I'll run into a, a roadblock somewhere that I didn't foresee. But StarWarsMemes.com uh, is still not officially launched, but I don't care if you guys go to it and start checking them out. I have about 10 or 15 memes on that site. With my meme formatted sites that I'm doing now, um, this is hardly related to Liberty, but I just want to share it anyway. Um, I am going for like 30 plus, 20, 20 plus to 30 uh, memes before I even submit the sites, you know, submit the links to anything on social media and try to get traffic. Um, and then I want to see pretty steady traffic before I put an ad on the site. I think I jumped the gun with uh, the cat meme site, put the ad on too soon. Um, now it's my obligation to keep traffic coming in so I don't have to take the ads off um, or be in violation of Google's policy. That's a whole other episode for another time. Um, so anyway, cute cat memes, liberty memes, and then StarWarsMemes.com. Um, I'd like you to check them out. Give me your feedback. It's the same basic site theme. I just wanted to churn these sites out. Um, I made three sites in three days, and I'm going to add a ton more content so you can send uh, your memes to me too. Um, link to them under this video or whatever you want to do, and I'll, uh, I'll put them on the site. Back to the show notes. Um... I want to talk about freedom and liberty. Um, today is the 4th of July, and if it meant what it was supposed to mean, I guess, um, or if what it was supposed to mean was something we could find evidence for in, in, in real life uh, better than we can, um, this would be even more fitting. But, um, yeah, I didn't really plan anything for, for today or even to do a video today, so don't, don't think I'm that patriotic or anything. I'm really not. Uh, but I want to discuss the idea of freedom and liberty being apart from government. So, you know, you're, you're free to the extent to which you have options. Um, yes, it's true the government will restrict your options, and if we lived in a free society, while we might choose to elect to pay for many of the services we get through government, whether it be, you know, roads or uh, health care or, um, you know, defense, security, um, we would be we'd be free to choose, um, whereas now we're not free to choose. So, so whereas the state does um, restrict our options, we ourselves have restricted options that we create for ourselves, so that we impose upon ourselves due to other types of obligations. And I'll uh, continue that thought in just a moment. All right, guys, uh, I moved again because I feel like um, this is better for less foot traffic. People come down to this dock area here to uh, watch fireworks on the Fourth of July, so I'm kind of in a heavy traffic zone that I could have expected. So anyway, try freedom and liberty being untied from the state. We create our own freedom. We create our own liberty um, in our lives. I talked about this a little bit in the, in the last 10 episode, but we create that by our choices. So we have less freedom with our time if we choose to have a full-time job or if we choose to go to a college or university uh, or if we choose to be in a relationship at times, if we choose to start a business, um, if we choose to take on a hobby, whether whether it's collecting coins or, or making paper airplanes or knitting or what have you, at playing Xbox, smoking weed, whatever you choose to make a regular part of your life is going to restrict you in the way of choices to, to the extent that you're unflexible and fulfilling that um, choice as a, as a regular like habit or routine. So anyway, so we... We make these choices somewhat subconsciously, I think, but on a cumulative basis to where before long we're working full-time jobs, we're in relationships, we have a family, we have kids, we have mortgages, we have two car payments, and there's no escaping. So hold on, forget the government for a second. You could live in a totally free society, but you just built a lifestyle for yourself to where you're in a debtor's prison. You've created a scarcity of opportunity by giving yourself... Um, no choice but to continue to exchange hours for labor. So if you're okay with that, if you find your time to be highly expendable or the thing that you're being paid for is something you greatly enjoy doing so much so that, that you don't wish to have free time doing other things, then who or my, who is anyone else to judge and say that you ought to be doing something otherwise. But to the extent to which you, you complain about your job or you wish you had more free time, most people have the option to do so, and they don't exercise it. Um, so it would come at a sacrifice uh, of lifestyle at times, but to pretend you don't have the option is to, again, reduce your own freedom 
insofar as just pretending you have less options than you do. Freedom is options. Um, and liberty is um, defined in a lot of ways, but an interesting way to put it in this framework is to say it's the extent to which you can exercise your options without um, being impeded by someone um, using coercion or force. Um, that's probably not the best definition, but I think it works for what we're trying to do. Regardless, I want to encourage people to look at their lives and ask themselves, am I restricting my freedom? Am I restricting my liberty? Um, if you can't answer that question, it might be interesting to have you on the show, and I could try to help you ask different questions to yourself about your choices, about your situation, and pose you alternatives. And, and maybe if, even if you're not interested in doing any of those alternatives or changing your life at all, Maybe there are ways in which you're not as free as you could be, um, but there are things you're okay with. There are things you don't wish to change, and that might give you better context and better peace of mind about your, your lifestyle if it's restricted in any way because to some large degree you've, you've chosen that. All right, so tap dancing on down, to, down the list here. Um, getting into our next topic in just a minute about agorism but that is in this episode for the same reason because you know waving a flag or shooting a firework off and blowing something up as fun as that may be it's not going to make you more free um as a result you know hate to break it to you but it's just not going to do that you know anything really so um agorism is literally um basically the practice of creating freedom in your life uh, without asking permission um, or asking forgiveness because you're not doing anything offensive, right? Um, in most cases, I guess, um, you know, if you start like the Silk Road or something, if you're um, Ross Ulbricht, you know, you you would be begging, apolog- you know, begging forgiveness or whatever to try to save your ass, but it's just because the state's so violent. But I want to cut into uh, quick the topic of um, the elections which are coming up next year. I want to remind people to not get concerned about that. Don't worry about voting. Don't worry about making a choice. Don't worry about studying the options. If it's something that amuses you to see as a melodrama playing out, as a soap opera type of thing, again, who am I to tell you what to do with your time in the way of a hobby? However, if you can study statists that are pretending to be pandering to you, um, make sure it's not an ego stroke because you could be studying you know, philosophers and, and their theories. You could be studying um, classical moral philosophy or, or um, you could be studying Locke and Kant and, um, you know, Mises and Rothbard um, or whoever else you find, you know, appropriate to study. Uh, but I think the, the current crop of politicians um, are just window dressing on the facade of the empire that um, is slowly and steadily crumbling. So what, what is the real point of studying these names too, too closely? Um, so, uh, it does not matter who is in office, um, democracy and course of government does not work, so it doesn't serve, um, the end user, which is ourselves, the individual, um, in an objectively positive way, um, uh, by nature. So, you know, the, the, the way these systems are put together is meant to, to serve the people on top, the elites, but in a, in a deceit, deceiving way, wherein, um, us little people have a hard time detecting that we're being, uh, deceived or manipulated so if it feels that way it's probably not uh, a total coincidence that it feels so um democracy and the uh coercive government is nothing more than um a blunt object that is wielded by whoever um is charming enough to win the favor of more mindless folks at the same time sorry to include you in that group if you're an avid voter but most of the voters are not mindful of their choices outside of a very narrow set of parameters like abortion, gay rights, the military, entitlements, or something similar to that. So don't worry about voting. Please, in fact, don't vote. That, that makes the cause for liberty much, um, much more pronounced. Uh, we're, we're making a clear statement by not voting that we do not wish to be ruled and we do not agree with democracy as a moral system any longer. Sorry, it's been 300 years and... Uh, what other technology are you using in your life that's 300 years old other than a spoon and the fork? Um, let's be real. So, um, which takes us into our next topic, um, 
how do you get away from the state? How do you become free? There's a lot of ways, but one important way is to practice agorism, which I'll get into in just a moment. People are calling out the woodworks here like uh, cockroaches <laughs> or uh, something like that. Ants just turn around and there's more people, more people on talking about liberty and anarchy and agorism. So, ah, climactic uh, mood killer, but anyway, let's see what the crafty editing job can do for this one. Um, how do you get away from the state? You practice agorism. You, um, let me define that again a little better. Basically, it's the practice of going around the state, creating um, alternate economies, um, black gray market activity, um, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, black market just means untaxed, unregulated, and markets don't need taxes and they don't need regulation. They are self-regulating in nature. Um, that's what a market is. It's a, it's a regulation um, method system. So... Um, We've been tricked into believing we need the state. That's not that unreasonable un, uh, to understand. So um, we practice agorism and we correct the errors of the state by taking away its power, by taking away its tax base, by taking away its legitimacy in the eyes of the economy. People who are making trades and transactions start to use agorism because they say, you know what, let's take more power back as the parties involved in the trade and not water down the value of our exchange by giving some away to a third party who has, um, you know, less than honorable intent for, for that uh, involvement. You know, they're not bringing their share of value to the table. Um, how to use agorism. I'm going to give you guys a quick list, and uh, only because I know YouTube videos do better on the short end, so I try to always be as brief as I can and deliver value to you guys and keep the entertainment attempts down to a minimum. So um, how do you practice agorism? Do something in someone else's name. Boyfriend, girlfriend, um, you know, mom, dad. Um, we all have a tendency to want to own property, own things, own a car, own a nice phone, own a nice house, own nice things, have a jet ski, have a boat. If you spend as much time trying to own things as you did trying to have access to things that you didn't have to pay for, you'd probably have access to all the same things and you'd have no bill and you'd have no liability and you'd have no everything you own and that's the the real um this is the real pearl of wisdom for people who stayed you know 15 20 minutes into this video um I, i'm gonna impart upon you guys if you don't know this already everything that you own owns you and this is meant to be useful not fluffy um so let me try to flesh that out to the extent to which you are controlled by your previous choices and their material object possession choices like, oh, I own a boat or I own a jet ski or I own a nice jersey collection that I have mounted on the wall. Well, that jersey collection is keeping you from effectively going camping and being homeless, you know. Well, you could put everything you own in storage, sell your house, and then be homeless. Or you can keep your house, keep your jersey collection, and go be homeless for a week or two and try that out. Not to say that we're all trying to get homeless or anything, but it's a, it's a method of increasing your freedom to near 100% levels um, if, if you're feeling stuck just as a, as a shake-up. And um, you can't do that if you have a lot of things, especially if you have a lot of payments for those things. If you have credit card debt, if you have car payments, insurance payments, mortgage payments, property tax. Um, and furthermore, uh, on the other side of that coin, which adds even more to the point, is you put your name on a bunch of things, you know, a car that's got to be garage somewhere, um, a home, those are usually pretty well rooted to the ground. Um, you know, twenty thousand dollars of DJ equipment. You know, if the state knows these things about you, they know where to find you. They know you're not going to wander too far, or try to stretch out your leash or go off of it because, in a sense, you're not asking for their help, but you're you're acknowledging that you can't live the lifestyle you want easily or conceivably without um, registering and asking permission and all that. It would be difficult to, you know, create an agorist lifestyle around certain things, you know, being uh, a lawyer or being a, um, you know, a professional DJ or something, you know, probably a lot of types of activity require putting your name down. Being a freelancer, being a backpacker, being a traveler, being a hobo, being a um, day laborer, if you're young enough, if you don't have a family yet and you can afford to do it for a year or two, welcome to freedom. 
you know, treat yourself to some freedom. No one needs to know where you're living. No one needs to know what town you're in until you've already left that town. No one needs to know how you earn your money unless you wish to share it because you're never earning enough to report it. You're never earning enough to be on the books. You're never earning enough to um, even warrant the other party. You know, make $500 or $1,000 at the most from every person you work for, but work for 100 people a year. Make 100000 a year in, in 100 days worth of work or 200 days work, worth of work if you can or 300 days worth of work. But you decide. Um, or make 50000 or make 10000 a year. But make it work to where you're not a slave to, to your lifestyle or to your things. That's the message. Um, use things in other people's names. Don't give your residence in, don't get your residence in your name if you can avoid it. Um, don't have any human dependencies if you can put off having children or put off um, getting into a relationship where the other party is dependent upon you for resources, do so because you're in a stage if you're young enough in your life where you can explore freedom and develop yourself and develop your value without having to part with that value on a regular basis if you're not so interested in having those things, relationships, children, whatever it may be, uh, to where the trade-off is, is not a problem for you. Um, you, again, you can register vehicles and property in a business name instead of a personal name. Uh, you can find gigs. So instead of working a job, work gigs, work events. You know, there's fairs, there's concerts, there's um, festivals where they need people that, you know, a lot of times you can make 100 to $200 on a daily basis for your labor. Maybe work some long hours, but get paid in cash. You know, work three days, make four to $600, and walk away with an envelope full of cash that, you know, especially if you're not renting a property in your name if you're living in someone's house or you're paying on the side to somebody or whatever in cash you can live a very comfortable agorist lifestyle um, in a cash only um, way and and live off of gigs so uh, here's my resources for finding gigs go to craigslist go pick a city or an area and then under where it says uh, jobs and services uh, or to the right of services and under the jobs i think if you can't find it on the page, then forget it. But <laughs> look for where it says gigs, and there's like seven or eight different types of gigs, depending on what city you're in. And look under labor, look under domestic, look under computer, look under creative, look under writing. Those are all uh, some of the main categories of gigs on Craigslist. If you're unaware, this is where you find your day and weekend labor and events. Or I need help with a website, I need help installing a new printer. You know, there might be things you can do. I need help painting a shed hauling away some old firewood, whatever it may be. There might be some things that you can do that you feel like, oh, I'm unqualified. There's gigs out there you can do and make cash. Start getting agorous with yourself. Even if you keep your full-time job and you keep everything else on the books, well, do some stuff on the side. You know, Increase your power and your freedom by, by having some agorous income. Um, Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash for hire is a way to find some online gigs. If you have uh, some, some technical abilities or you're, you're crafty with... Uh, Sorry, I'm repositioning crafty with graphic design or something like that. Uh, Reddit.com forward slash r forward slash jobs for Bitcoin is the same kind of uh, concept, but in Bitcoin payments versus uh, cash US dollar payments. On Facebook, if you search FSP job board, there is a free state project job board. Um, it is a closed group. It is meant to help people who are either in the Free State Project where they pledge to move to New Hampshire for the Free State Project or they are um, in the process of considering doing so and they're looking for work and they're looking to transition. So going on there is a way to find work and it's a way to offer work if, you can, if you're can, if in the position to do so um, to, to other liberty-minded folks who, who will see it your way, hopefully, and, and be more um, amenable to work with. Don't go in there trying to scoff up jobs if you're not a Free State Project member. I go in there not as a free state project member, but to offer jobs, not to take jobs. So I think that's good. Um, if anyone complains about me offering jobs, I might stop, I guess. Um, but to take jobs, make sure you're part of the free state project if you're going to use that resource um, frequently. Um, posting gigs and services on local message boards in your downtown area, if that's possible for you, is another way. So depending on the town you live in, if it's a folksy or kind of area, Find the downtown area, find the um, grocery stores, the pharmacies and stuff where there's little cork boards and post up, you know, it doesn't have to be fancy flyers or business cards. You can post up 
uh, eight by eleven sheet of printer paper with um, a message on it, and then you can handwrite little tabs and cut them up so people can tear off your phone number with a little brief synopsis of you know, so computer repair or you know house sitting or babysitting or you know uh, fresh country yams or whatever it is you you're gonna do agorist it could be all those things but put those ads out for yourself so you're not only looking for opportunities but opportunities are now coming to you if you're not doing these things and you take my advice and do these things starting today and you come to me and you send me a message in 30 or 60 or 90 days and say hey man I tried your advice I started being agorist and I'm making $2,000 a month on the side or $1,000 a month on the side that I didn't even think I could and it's not impacting my lifestyle very badly or it's making my lifestyle better. I want to hear that. I'd love to know about that. Or if you try it and it doesn't work for you, let me know why not and what, what happened. Um, and I'll talk about it here. Um, so I talked about a lot of stuff. Uh, you can check with friends and family, see who has uh, cash off the, off the books um, or barter work that they'd be willing to offer you. Um, and by all means, get involved in Bitcoin. Um, I have a pretty long rant that I could go into on this, but I don't know if I will. Basically, just keep in mind, things don't stay the same, you know. And being uh, a Luddite or someone who is um, dense to technology changes is a, a form of a box that we put ourselves in as we age if we're not um, open-minded and responsive to, to change technologically. Bitcoin is one of the most fundamental and um, meaningful changes that we'll probably all experience in our lifetime. It could take another 10 or 15 or 20 years for either Bitcoin itself or another cryptocurrency to gain uh, mass adoption to where it's somewhat of a household name and to where it's accepted in most places and it's commonly used by many. Um, we could be three years away from that with Bitcoin itself or we could be 10 years away from that or 20 years away from that. But for many of us, that's still smack in the middle of our life um, and or in our life at some point. Um, so unless you're 140 and watching this video, you, you, you could have another 20 in you. So why not um, spend a little time every year, if it's just um, maybe an hour a week or two hours a week, learning about Bitcoin, learning about how to buy Bitcoin, how to, how to get in the market. If you do a search on YouTube for Coin Pros Crypto Talk Hour, um, I'll try to link it in the descriptions if I remember. That was a podcast I did last year that about maybe ran about 20 episodes that covers a lot about Bitcoin and some of the uh, other cryptocurrencies and where the technology is headed and how I can be pretty confident that it's going to be uh, around forever. Um, so whether or not it's Bitcoin is the final brand name, it's something I think uh, I recommend everyone getting, getting involved with. Um, there's more ways to get into agorism. Um, I want the audience to give me some ideas. If anybody has any agorist um, strategies that I've left out, by all means, put them in uh, the comments or um, somewhere. Shoot me a message, and I'll um, I'll try to include it in a future video. Um, I still want guests. Um, if you, you know, we did an interview. I did an interview uh, with Nick Hazelton, the anarcho yakalist um, from the Anarcho Yakalist podcast, and uh, it was great speaking with him. Uh, the young man is very bright and ambitious for his age, um, and just in general. So uh, it was an honor to have him on, and I know you guys might know some Liberty people or be a Liberty-minded person who's not camera shy. You don't have to be famous or celebritarian or anything, whatever. Just uh, throw your hat in the ring, and, and uh, if I had plans with you to do an interview, and you're watching this, and you're like, oh, screw this guy, he bailed on me, whatever, Hit me up again. I've been traveling. Um, I lose contact information at time, times. I'm not trying to avoid anybody. I want every guest I can get. So hit me up. Um, donations, road celebrity forward slash donate um, if you got a little extra change to throw my way. But otherwise, I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and share. And uh, by all means, go out and create liberty in your lives. All right, guys. Take it easy.